Hey everyone and welcome back to Sean's Trains. I know it's been a while since I've done a product review, but I'm happy to announce that my friend John donated, well, let me borrow his SD60F from Aurora Miniatures. I'm really excited to unbox this. I got to see it for a few minutes operating on the Superior Scenics layout, and it was really cool to see in action, especially with the fans and the lighting effects on this thing. I think it's going to knock scale trains and Rapido off their mantle a little bit. I would still put scale trains on top, um, just by a hair over Rapido, just because of the Keep Alive. But this has got a Keep Alive, all the detail of both of them, and more. So let's open it up and take a look. All right, so we're going to talk about the engine itself for a little bit. So we ran it over at Dave's, and I mean, there are no really real issues other than a couple of high spots in the ballast. Yeah, that's about all I noticed, a couple of high spots. Obviously, break-in time periods, but otherwise running-wise, phenomenal so and you were pulling some pretty heavy trains of some serious grades and it's not like you're just running on a flat level racetrack layout no i was pulling the, his ore cars it was about 50 or so round roundhouse and walters ore cars up that grade from a dead standstill solo locomotive that could pull them all without a problem yeah towards the top it was slipping a little bit but to be expected but it that did was a not steep grade need help yeah now one thing is online, they've talked quite a bit about the gears issue with it, within the truck or the tower, whichever it is. Um, I wonder how long that takes because you had this thing going for a couple of hours. It can no be noticed immediately. I know when I was running it, it looked like it had a little bit of a jerk from the gears. Could just be needing the full break in or I might have had one with the bad gears. Not positive offhand until we get a full break in period on it. So is the gear issue that people are experiencing with this, is it broken gears and it doesn't want to run, or is it just a slight jerk? It's a slight jerk. It seems more like a slack in the gears, but that's actually not what's causing it. It's just a bad manufacturing defect from factory. Okay. And I think uh, from what you told me today, they're actually offering a remedy as long yes. as you have the receipt from uh, an authorized, from an authorized dealer. dealer with the receipt for the North American customers. For all the Canadian customers that still have not received theirs yet, they are checking them all over and verifying them before they get to the customers. Okay, so it's not like half the run is getting pulled back because it was produced completely incorrectly. Correct. It's not like the plow's too low and it's smacking everything it comes across. Right, so what happened, and it's on their Facebook page, they kind of explain it, they were actually supposed to be both released to the Canadian market and the U.S. market at the same time, the same date. But when they drop shipped them to the U.S. dealers, they got them months, almost a month ahead of time. Was there any the reason for that? Can it, just getting held up in ports and the delays oh, from containers. Gotcha, gotcha. So when they drop shipped them to the U.S., all the U.S. guys got them pretty quick. So you could say they got a little lucky up north. Very much so. All right. Well, I mean, so it's not like you can't use the engine. It's still very much functional. There's nothing stopping you well, from using it. Very functional still. Very fully functional. And as most U.S. modelers don't realize, and Aurora actually had to post out today on Facebook too, they were in the locomotive game for a while now as we see with this one. Yeah, so this is not the first locomotive that Aurora Miniatures has made. It's actually in, would you say a long line of locomotives? I wouldn't say necessarily a long line, but they've had a couple good couple years of working on the same gear tower, same systems for various Chinese locomotives that work very extremely well. Now, we'll take this, out, this one out in a minute, but I want to talk about this a little bit more and some of the stuff going on in the hobby because we've had some time to talk about it today. And I want to point out that we have been very fortunate in this hobby to get some of the most detailed locomotives ever. I mean, ever. You've got step lights, you've got cab lights, you have interior lights in the gauges on some locomotives, not like the museum quality. I, mm -hmm. I think this has got lights this in it. This has the gauges do light up on this. Okay, yeah, that, dude, that's nuts. Um, I mean, that's just bonkers. I mean, you've got flexible train line hoses. Some brands or some products you can even buy with rubber, magnetic train line hoses, so Correct. they connect when you, I mean, think about that. I mean, yeah, you're paying good money for this and you expect perfection, but think about how much is going into this. If you have one minor problem, it's not that big of a deal. And it's across how many? The Aurora Miniatures Facebook page said about 4% of the models that they tested. So it could be a hair more depending on what parts of the runs they were. 
but it's still right on par, if not less than some of the issues that other manufacturers have had in recent times. So 4%, 4 in 100, 1 in 25. That's, that's better than almost any other recall or major issue mm -hmm. I've seen in a manufacturer. I wouldn't call that a major issue. It's an annoyance, yes, but is it major? No, not at all. I mean, it hasn't stopped it from production. It hasn't stopped it from working on your layout. It's just a little delay in movement. I mean, I saw that when I reviewed the SD80 from uh, Athern. That was a major issue because mm -hmm. it's a long car body, longer drive shafts, more flex, the gears. And like you said, it could be just part of the braking period on this particular one. Um, but when I ran on the layout, the little bit that I did, I, it wasn't super noticeable to me. Um, but I, I mean, for all the stuff that's coming on these things these days, you got to expect stuff is still going to start right. having issues. And I do know that, from again, from the Aurora Facebook page, they did say on some instances it was the higher speed you ran it at, it was noticeable. Some, t some people saw it lower, some people saw it higher. And really and truly, unless you're watching your locomotive that closely 100% of the time, you're not going to notice it. Okay. Now, I will say that I was very impressed by the level of detail with this, with the fans working and everything else, um, which is, this is not the first time that's happened either. Uh, no. the earlier Walters Early Proto. was Lifelike like Proto. But life yes. like Proto. The FAs and the Erie Bolts both had that, but they were a bolt drive. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not the first time it was offered, and everyone makes it sound like it is. Now, it's the first time it's been this popular, because I don't know how many people paid that much attention to it. Before, but none because on my all my old ones from Proto, ripped off the belt. Yeah. Well, the fan moved, but it was not consistent. It was not accurate. Yeah, and it wasn't as detailed as this. So I will say that. Um, but this is a very amazing locomotive. I mean, this is beautiful, and they're. It sounds like they have plans to do the SD fifty F. Looks like they're gonna. They're looking for pictures for the SD fifty F, and on their website, I can't remember offhand. They are scheduling another six axle that is not a cowl unit. Is Interesting. Up in, the works as well right now any ideas what that could be i know i've seen pictures it's a c something or other i'd have to look at it okay so i think overall from my experience from you running this on a superior scenic layout my time here this is one of probably the most detailed plastic locomotive today other than maybe um a museum quality from scale trains pretty much i haven't seen too many other highly detailed rapido started the trend Way back in the day with their first locomotives, they started with that highly detailed. Scale trains took it to the next level with rivet counter and then the museum quality, which brings it to a whole new level. And for affordability, Aurora has done an amazing job putting that much detail, this much work into it, that's on par, if not better in some cases, than some of those other more popular brands. Absolutely. And one thing I loved, and uh, NS Modeler 24, uh, Joshua Clark did a great job of pointing out the trucks. You can see right mm -hmm. through the side, it, it looks just like the real thing should. Um, the Tower 55, didn't they have something kind of similar? It wasn't as nice. I cannot remember offhand from the Tower 55s. I know the old brass agent drives used to be very similar, yeah. where the most you might see is the drive shaft spinning. Yeah. But it looked very similar, but not to this level of detail. Yeah, this is definitely the best by far. I mean, this is a level of detail that, you know, you used to expect from brass and never expected out of plastic. Nope. And here we are. We've got it. The paint is as crisp as can be. Um, I'm, I, I'm happy with it. And it's not even mine. Um, I do want to talk about, first for a quick minute, about the sound. Because I've heard people complain that the prime mover isn't loud enough. I've heard people complain that there isn't enough volume overall. But I feel like, you know, not trying to put fingers in anyone's pie, I feel like that's pretty subjective. Because it sounds like you're pretty happy with the volume. From my experience running on the Superior Scenics layout, I'm quite happy with the volume where it was from factory. Yes, the radiator sound was a little bit louder than I would have liked. But I'm not trying to compete over a club. I'm not trying to hear my whole train across the room. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear it localized as if I'm there in that scene. Yeah, I, I think that's something I've really started to play with programming for and started to really appreciate is if my engine's here, I want, to, I want it to sound like I'm in the yard watching it idle from a similar distance. So it'd look like that size, you know, maybe mm -hmm. 50 yards away or something. And that's how I want to hear it. I don't expect to hear it on the other side of the club. And if, if you're expecting to hear your horn to tell you where your train is and you're operating at a club, Especially if there's people that you should probably just keep better track of your train. Yeah. Um, and that goes, you know, with uh, club etiquette and whatnot. Throw your switches back, be polite, watch your crossings, 
stuff like that. But I mean, I think overall the sound is very good quality. Um, I was impressed with the Scale Trains SDL 39s with the sound quality out of there. I would put this absolutely right there with it. Um, I, it did sound amazing, but I think maybe if people would want to take a Loke programmer or go to the club or a hobby shop with a Loke programmer and maybe turn down some of the other sounds, or you could probably turn up the Prime Mover a little bit. I haven't had this on the programming track, but I would love to find out how that actually looks, what the mm -hmm. um, how the mapping looks for all the sound values, and maybe play with it a little bit. I've offered to one of my friends on Facebook to take his, uh, turn the Prime Mover up or try turning the other ones down, just kind of... Uh, tuning it a little bit, tweaking everything, just to get it to sound a little bit more consistent across the board. Um, I know for like the horn and the bell, they're kind of high pitch. It's a little easier to get more volume out of that. Mm -hmm. But with the depth and the bellows you expect from the prime mover, it's a little harder to convey that. Um, I think the best manufacturer for conveying the prime mover is probably going to be Broadway Limited with the Rolling Thunder. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the best. But that is, again, an external speaker, unfortunately. Yeah, there's no competing with that. And that is... I don't want to say it's a troubled system, but I, I struggled with it because the moment you get too far behind the building or something and you lose line of sight, the signal cuts out. I had that with mine, and you can change the delay, but then all you're doing is putting off the issue. Um, but I got to say, overall, this has run very well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more and to seeing more from Aurora Miniatures. I'm really glad they came into the market for uh, U.S. locomotives or, excuse me, North American locomotives. <laughs> I look forward to seeing what they do. Um, and I absolutely plan to compare this to the CN-8s that uh, Rapido announced, which we've all been waiting for yes. since they came out in the Prime... Prime Mover series. Prime Mover Without series. any detail and just... Yeah, with bare detail. Um, and some people upgraded theirs, and they, I was still happy to have mine. Oh, um, I was too. And then Otter Valley is doing, is it 6012 or 6020? Um, I'll drop that down in the video here. You guys can check that out, and I'll put a link in the description. But you can actually buy some of the more unique uh, power that CN mm -hmm. had from Otter Valley, which has been a really cool up-and-coming yes, hobby shop. That's been a great one. With even some of their own models now. Um, and there aren't a lot of hobby shops that go that far out of their way to make models. Uh, Displains does with S Gage. Few and far between. Yeah. Prairie Shadows does. They're doing yes. their own now as well. But overall, they're few and far between. So that's really cool to see. But I'm really excited to see how Aurora does with these. I hope they get everything fixed. It sounds like this summer the fix will be available for those with, you know, the, with the bad trucks. If you've got all the requisite things, they'll open up the information on February to start getting it. And they'll be looking to send the trucks out in the summer. So hopefully that remedies that. I hope that everyone who has one, um, give it a chance. I mean, it's brand new. I know we get expectations high. I've had my issues with brands in the past. <laughs> um, I can tell you all about it in person. I'm not putting that on YouTube. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited to see these. I, I, I missed out on getting one. I just don't have the money to put out for one right now. For me, I was excited when they first announced these. And then when I realized they were in the Chinese market first, that's why I went and bought that. Checked that out. And that made me all the more excited and sure that this was going to be a solid locomotive model to have. Yeah, and this is a really cool engine to see. So we'll, we'll get that out here in just a second. And take a look at what we, of what Aurora had before they came to North America. We've got the, which locomotive is this? The, so this is the Chinese, it's a DF5. DF5. So this is uh, a model that was done by Aurora Miniatures how many years ago? I'm not sure offhand how long ago. I know this is the only one available still on the North American store, and it's in the North Korean Railways paint. So awesome. Different paint than usual you'd see. I find it unique. I love it. And like I said, this was what made me excited for those SD60Fs. And that's a very nice looking locomotive. I love how big that cab window is and you can see inside. And then um, what, what would you say is special about this locomotive? This was the first locomotive that I've seen that had the insane detail that I was getting used to seeing with Aurora, with um, scale trains, ribbit counter, and then uh, museum Rapido. Qual Rapido, and then museum quality scale trains okay. with all the extra detail. One of the things is, and I'll carefully pick this one up, is this was also one of the ones that had the nice wow. detail underneath. That's incredible. And are those painted wheels? Yes. Because so, a lot of the Chinese railroads would have the painted wheels. So that's a red inside of the wheel and then white trim on the face. You got white walls. <laughs> 
And just look at the truck detail. That's incredible. That's insane. So like Rapido usually says, their cars look best upside down. That could be true for these locomotives because that is nuts. This is very well can be said that this looks best upside down, but I wouldn't go that far because this <laughs> looks best all, all around. There's so many different little details and bits and interesting things that this locomotive has. So with that being said, I, I would... I, I got to give Aurora Miniatures a lot of credit. That is a beautiful locomotive. So why don't you show us around a little bit your favorite parts of the locomotive. And because uh, those truck side frames look amazing too. Those truck side frames are insane. And I was afraid to open it up out of that depot style packaging that they have, which was a unique packaging that you just saw me unwrap it out of. Mm -hmm. And it's something that took me getting used to, but I, like, I love it a lot better now that I'm used to it versus packaging at most other manufacturers, but that's another part for another time. So detail wise, obviously being a Chinese locomotive, you only got the one horn. Now that goes into the decoder functions, which we can get into a little bit later, but some of the extra details, just the extra, all the different separate wire hand grabs, the shutters, which after flipping it upside down, kind of rotate, but that's another thing. This does have shutter flutter. And if we rotate it, this one was a little bit more unique because this one versus the SD60, this was die cast. Whereas that's ABS. The only so the body on this is actually metal. Correct. Wow. The biggest other difference between the two is this had a smoke unit built in and inside the box is smoke fluid and everything else to fill it. But this does not have a keep alive. Where the SD60F has the keep alive and I know they said originally on the page for that locomotive that they were planning on doing a smoke unit in the future for it. How accurate that still is, I'm not sure. I'm not one for making my diesel smoke. I feel like that's a, a specific crowd. Not everyone can deal with the smoke. I know I get headaches from it, so I appreciate not having it, but I know that's going to look cool. Yeah, I've seen videos in Aurora's YouTube pay, YouTubes have the video of it and how to fill the smoke unit on this unit. But myself, I'm not going to do it. That's beyond me. But the detailing is gorgeous. And this side does still have the classification lights that still light up beautifully. We get around to the other side here. And kind of in the cab, this does run like the old Alcos and older U.S. Railroads. Long hood forward. That is forward on this unit. And the cab detail is just amazing inside there. And we'll get some pictures to put up. But I can see from here um, just how much stuff is in that cab. That is gorgeous. It is, especially when it's lit up just like the SD60F. Looks just as gorgeous. And just an all-around tour of the model. Just the detailing is just amazing and spectacular on it. The paint is very crisp. There's very little, if any, flash that I've seen. Very little overspray. I was going to say, those lines are very crisp, and that blue and white really pops. And then the walkways, too, I want to point out, look really nice. They do. And I will point out that by looking at this, I just thought of this, compared to a lot of U.S. manufacturers, at least in model airing, the hand, the grab irons or the walkway uh, uh, grab irons are not all leaning. <laughs> no, these manage to be fairly straight. Yeah. Um. Some of them are a little bit pushed out from the foam protector, but that's going to happen with anything. Yeah. That'll happen with any model. And the walkway, point that out too, you can, diamond plates have got a really good texture to it. So it's not just like a print that's on there, it's an actual textured. Correct. If I rub this pick across it, you can feel the texture and you can feel it dragging across it. Does the SD6050 or the SD60F, does that actually have diamond plate or is that smooth? That feels smooth to me. Okay. Would, yeah, that's smooth. Well, it's a beautiful engine. I think we need to get these on the track and uh, compare the shutter flutter to the radiator fans. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Let's do it. There we go. Yeah, you still need to grease the gears and let them break in too because they're slower up and down. But there's the shutter flutter. Oh, 
All right, so you can see a little bit of shutter flutter on this guy, and you can see the fans working on there. So that's just a, that's just a good example of what Aurora, mini, Aurora Miniatures can do. If they can do that and they can fix this gear tower issue, I think they're going to be a great manufacturer to add to the North American market. Oh, they're definitely a great manufacturer to add. I, like I said, the gear tower thing, it's going to happen with any manufacturer that it's not going to get caught. Because you figure most of the people working in those factories, they don't care about models. They're, it's just a job for them. Yeah. So they're not, their eyes aren't going to catch it. They're not trained for it. But as you can see, even in the cab detail of the DF5, you can still see everything lit up. Absolutely. Just phenomenally. All right. So we're going to fire this engine up here. I think this is just a good way to look at it. Uh, probably one of the better angles on the layout with lighting that I have. So we've got locomotive 5558. So that's the volume of the prime mover versus the other sounds as it comes from the factory. Um, I just want to say that, first of all, that the sound out of this is amazing. Like the quality of the files, the quality of the speakers and everything is just amazing. The only engines I have that would even come close to this are my SDL39s. I really want to upgrade my SD4-2s, and this is just amazing. So we're going to turn on our headlights. We're going to try our class lights. So each button press is going to activate a light, and then the second button press is going to turn it back off. And we're just cycling five here. So as opposed to the scale trans SD4-2s, as with each button press, um, you'd get the light to change over. This is going to be on and then off, and then the next light on and then off. Well, hello, Copper. How are you today? My dog decided to suddenly be very loving, so we're going to... You may hear him a little bit in the background. So we're going to do a little run by. So you can hear the sound a little bit more. Overall, the SD60F from Aurora Miniatures is an excellent locomotive, definitely worth the price tag, and it's probably worth a little bit of trouble. So I ask that you give it another chance, and I hope that we all can take a look at this and see how far this manufacturer and that this model railroading um, hobby of ours has come, and it's, it's just such an awesome thing to behold. Um, in the time that I've had this engine and that I've seen it operate, um, and kind of tinkered with it a little bit it is just a spectacular model so if you're looking at one of these if you're considering it please don't be scared if anything if you've waited like i have now's the time to buy while all the fixes are coming through in the newer models um ovr trains uh, otter valley railroad and aurora have done a great job to try to mitigate this and to help everyone as much as possible and i think that's all we can really look for these days and the number of errors as more detail and everything comes through these models so please take a chance take a look um and keep ordering that's what keeps the hobby alive thanks for watching sean's trains and we'll see you in the next video